Today we're going to have a look at a small radio of the brand Alpha. Now the person who sold me this radio uh, only told me that well basically the radio worked but only intermittently so there seems to be at least one problem in it now there are two things about this radio that make it a little bit special first of all it's a radio which if I'm not mistaken and let's take it out of the box seems to have been built in Romania okay here it is oh there you go this is it uh, let me show you a bit with a bit more light so this radio was built in Romania I mean you can see it on the bottom of the radio okay so this is a little bit of history actually um, it was probably built around the 70s and if you look into the box of the radio so where the radio came in uh, I actually found this okay and it's all written in French which is kind of funny and let me see do we have any sort of date here mm -mm -mm. no no I can't see any sort of date here let me see here on the manual actually so they they procured me this little manual that goes with it and as you can tell it's French I don't know if you can read this but okay so it's a, a French manual and as it turns out I'm extremely lucky in the sense that not only does it describe how to use the radio okay there's a few short instructions listed on the manual um, it actually has a small schematic as well which is great okay so that will allow me to uh, well to fix the radio uh, if I can find any specific problem and uh, let me see um, what makes this little radio a little bit unique is that it actually has only two bands on it which are described if you if you look at the uh, dial face as GO and OC now GO is the French for Grande Onde so long wave actually and OC stands for Onde Courte or short wave so this radio actually has no broadband or AM and no FM it only has long wave and short wave and the short wave as the manual says is the band of 5.9 to 12 megahertz so the 51 to 25 meter band you can see it here on the manual hang on so there you go so as you can see right here it says the short wave band is 5.9 to 12 megahertz the long wave band is 150 to 260 kilo cycles or kilohertz okay so and that's the 2000 to 1153 meter band right so um, in several aspects 
the radio is a little bit special so let's dive right in okay so I want to give uh, the little radio a power up okay so you, you see it has a carrying handle and a little dial with an on off button actually the the dial knob is on the top of the radio right here a uh, sort of a knurled plastic knob right here so that's a bit unusual anyway so I want to look for the battery compartment according to the user manual and it seems this little door down here is a sliding door so you push it uh, actually okay I'll hold it the right side up so you you put your thumb right here and then you slide to the right and it moves now I was a little bit surprised when I slid it open to find this little thing and that seems to be a collapsible antenna now isn't that cute so they supply a little how should I say a little space to put away your antenna and the antenna actually screws on top of the radio right here in this little plug I should say or contact there you go now you can't swivel the antenna you can only extend it or collapse it that's all you can do so okay so we're going to extend it in a minute uh, but uh, what we're going to do now is connect it up to a power source and according to the schematic it needs four and a half volts DC so I don't have batteries but I do have my small power supply so let's connect it up and let's see what comes out of it so the error it has according to the seller is intermittent working so let's have a look switch on oh I forgot to switch on my power supply okay let's say we will put uh, 4.6 volts on it so here we go oh, okay we got some noise Let's see on what band I'm on. Oh, it just went out. Okay, I'm on the shortwave band. Okay, there's something indeed not very right with it, so. Yep. yes indeed it has very intermittent functioning and well okay so that's it um, let's just open it up and see why it has this fault of intermittent working so according to the manual there are a number of screws at the back of the radio that should allow me to open it up so there are three screws one here one at top here and one down here and there's a speaker symbol below it but I think the speaker sp symbol is rather indicating this earphone plug you see right here okay I don't know if you can if it's sharp enough for you but 
yeah there's an earphone plug right there anyway so let's unscrew the three screws on top okay so it's held in with screws like this okay so let's take out the other screws yep. okay here goes so okay so the, the back of the radio came off rather easily that's the inside of it okay and now well this is the inside of the radio and the PCB with the components it's it looks sturdily built and it has seven transistors in it uh, according to the schematic and it has let me see uh, one two three four five electrolytics now the electrolytics look a little bit peculiar and I wouldn't be at all uh, astonished that they are Russian made electrolytics in fact I'm pretty certain that the IF cans are also Russian made although it's possible they also used uh, parts which were sourced in France as well in any case um, right off the bat uh, I only noticed one peculiar thing which is that you see the screw down there in the upper left corner let me show you so that one there that screw is not screwed in entirely in fact it's floating above the PCB so that screw has evidently been unscrewed and you can see the locking glue they used to lock it down is broken so the the glue seal is broken so yeah somebody must have done something to this radio in the past uh, only I still don't know what exactly now to take out the PCB I will need to unscrew a few things and um, I'm guessing that I'll need to unscrew this standoff and this one here to be able to lift out the whole PCB um, what else can I say oh yes um, so aside from the fact that it's all transistors and probably a few of them are germanium it has an intermediate frequency of 455 kilohertz which is also an interesting detail okay and uh, it has a, a push-pull amplification stage and it uses uh, you see the amplification stage here okay and this is the driver transistor this is the preamp and it has a detection stage which is here and you recognize it with the little diode here and then you have two IF stages which is one here and one there with some amplification transistors in between and you have the local oscillator right there so this one here which has two circuits uh, one for long wave and one for short wave okay now um, it's interesting to see that they use transistors of the type EFT now frankly I wouldn't know what an EFT is but if you look on the little description on the schematic you can see that they compare an EFT transistor type with an AC transistor type okay and more specifically 
an AC184. Now, as it happens, I do know that an AC184 is a germanium transistor. Okay. Uh, don't quote me on this, but I think it's I think it's a, a PNP transistor. Okay. And in fact, it, it's most most likely a PNP transistor. Okay. So, um, yeah. Well, let me unmount the PCB from the case. And let's have a look at the back of the PCB. Maybe we'll find a fault there. All right, this is the back of the PCB. And right away, as you can tell, um, it's not a very high quality PCB. And uh, certainly the one who did the solder work well, hmm, let's say he wasn't too conscientious about doing a, a good job. My overall impression is that it needed to be done quickly, quickly, and with a rather crude soldering iron and perhaps not too good quality solder. Okay, what else did I notice? Well, uh, looking over the board... I noticed this little thingy here. You see this here? Well, I don't know if this is accidental or not. Uh, let me see if I can focus on it. Okay, so I don't know if that is accidental or a deliberate, but there's certainly something fishy about it. And I when I touched it it moved okay so let me see if I can show you yeah yeah you you can see it move a little bit but when I touched it with my finger it moved a lot more let me see yeah you see it it moves so I don't know whether that bridge is intentional or not, but it's, it's certainly not, well, not kosher. Have a look at the assembly for the dial plate. Now, you see the dial pointer here is a little bit bent and out of shape. Okay, it's certainly not a, a very expensive part never was and have a look at at this dial face here so it's mounted on three standoffs as you can tell but look at it from the side yeah the, you see underneath the dialing wheel okay and the way the dial face is bent you would almost think that it was placed there as a sort of a, of an afterthought yeah and they they noticed at the factory that when you mount the dial plate um, it caused probably friction on the dialing wheel so they might have bent it a little bit to make it fit so well my reaction to that is it's probably not very well engineered okay and then you have the dialing wheel here and as you can see it's mounted on a little bracket and the dial cord runs on one end of the axis that runs through it okay so when you action the wheel it actually moves the the dial needle now when I turn this okay um, it's not well it, it kind of feels smooth but you can feel it's it's a little bit of rubbery the way it moves and and when you look at the ends of it well it certainly hasn't been cleaned uh, since it left the factory now it turns out that this screw here which was the screw that we noticed wasn't tied 
up properly was this one okay and you can see at the discoloring of the screw that it was only screwed in perhaps two mil and the rest is oxidized so I don't know maybe somebody tried to uh, well disassemble the radio to work on it or maybe the some person at the factory uh, tried to screw this screw completely in didn't succeed tried to lock it down with some uh, glue red uh, screw locking glue and didn't succeed either so what I'll do next is I'll unmount the dial face since it's bent here so I need to take a look at it and see what's underneath on the PCB this radio is full of surprises and they're not all good in fact I would say none of them are good okay so I started investigating well first of all I disconnected the, the, the speaker and the antenna okay so that I could work a little bit easier on the radio now I started to investigate a little bit closer the whole PCB after I unmounted the dial face okay so here it is and you can see it's quite badly bent and you can see where the wheel the dial wheel here scratched it yeah rubbed against it so obviously that's not very good we'll have to take a look and see how we might be able to fix this because really I my stomach churns when I see something like this okay anyway onwards um, so what turns out is that when you turn the dial the tuning knob yeah the, the tuning wheel jams up you see no matter how much I turn the tuning knob uh, the dial wheel itself stays put okay and there is well I would say not a humongous amount of force on the dial cord but it's reasonably tight and still it doesn't move now I can move the wheel uh, with my fingers okay so it can be moved but it's really stiff it's very stiff so probably it needs a little bit of cleaning which unfortunately for me will mean um, well unmounting the, the dial wheel and the dial cord and I'm really not looking forward to that you can tell it's really not a very nice well way of mounting wires okay so it's it's really sloppy all over so I'll need to correct that as well there's another mystery you see this capacitor here now I'm not 100% sure in how I should read this if I read it from this side so from left to right it's red red orange and that should be 22,000 picofarad or 22 nano now no matter how hard I looked on the schematic for this capacitor I just can't find it now I don't know whether this has been done by some tech in the past to repair the radio or something uh, but I, I just can't find this capacitor anywhere on the schematic also there's still this little mystery bridge here so I don't know um, I can't find this little bridge on the schematic either so unless this is critical to the functioning of the radio both will have to go 
okay the next thing that I will probably do is replace all these silly wires by a little bit thinner uh, gauge wires and solder them uh, more properly on the on the PCB okay so not as sloppily as this I will also clean the whole PCB uh, because obviously when they soldered the components they left the rosin uh, remains all over the PCB some uh, solder points look really very suspicious to me so I will go over all the solder points with my own soldering iron and clean those up touch them up okay so one more tip if you're going to release screws that are uh, glued down with some Loctite or some some uh, mounting glue locking glue okay then buy yourself one of these this is a dental tool for uh, scratching plaque off of teeth but it also works like a million bucks on removing uh, locking glue okay so it's really a very useful tool this is the dial mechanism of the radio and well do you see something peculiar about the dial mechanism take a good look do you see anything peculiar no take a good look at the dial wheel yeah there you go do you see something I'll tell you what's so peculiar about it have a look at the spring you see how the spring to which the dial cord is attached is attached with glue to the wheel itself the spring can't work I mean first of all the spring is probably way too long a spring so it, it doesn't even fit inside the wheel if you look at the opening for the spring it's much too large and secondly the spring is there with the intent to put some tension on the dial cord so that's always nice and taut when you roll the dial back and forth but since the spring is glued to the wheel it can't work it can't possibly work that way also because the spring is way too large for the wheel it's sticking out you see and probably that is one of the problems why they couldn't mount the dial face properly on top of it so I think I may have found the problem for the dial mechanism okay I finished cleaning up more or less the PCB and retouching most if not all the solder points I also replaced a, a few wires here and resoldered a few others and uh, the preliminary tests sound good but before I go on finishing it it up and, and cleaning it and all that I want to explain a little what I mean by retouching the solder points now imagine the little diagram there is of two lead wires of some component of course not to scale this is much larger than what it would be in reality but imagine these things here are lead wires say of a resistor now a bad solder point is where you have a lead wire sticking out from the bottom of the PCB you know like down there okay and 
when you take a very very close look at the lead wire at the base of the lead wire if it's a bad solder point you'll see the solder coming around the lead wire sometimes very very close but when you look at it with a magnifying glass you'll see there's actually a gap between the solder and the lead wire and that's of course as you can imagine very bad that sort of solder points gives uh, very intermittent errors in uh, in an appliance okay so for example with this radio because of bad solder points like these um, any shaking or vibration or whatever would very temporarily make a contact between the lead and the solder around it but as soon as let's say it starts to warm up a little bit or you bump it or whatever um, the contact between the solder and the, the lead is broken again since there is a very tiny gap an air gap actually between the solder and the lead and I found let's say both well, I didn't count them but I think that I found at least six or seven of these errors okay these problems so you could ask me okay what causes it well there could be several causes um, either bad solder um, greasy leads okay so if if you finger a, a, a lead too much you know your fingers always have a little bit of grease on them um, so if you grease those up and then you try to solder them then uh, most likely you'll end up with a bad solder point that's why you should always clean the leads with I don't know some alcohol or so and certainly not handle them with your fingers at least not too much okay that's why components when you buy them when they are fresh and new the leads are shiny yeah not greasy and that's to avoid this kind of problem okay so you need clean leads you need enough temperature to solder the leads and I would say somewhere between 250 degrees Celsius and anywhere to 400 degrees Celsius depending on the solder you use okay and of course you need the proper solder and I would advise rosin core solder okay with non-corrosive rosin at its center and if you heat it properly properly and the leads are clean as well as the copper pad to which you are soldering then you'll get a solder point that looks a little bit like this okay so almost like a little volcano from which the lead sticks out and when you look with a magnifying glass you'll see the solder really sticking to the lead I also managed to flatten and bring back to shape the dial panel well more or less there's still a little bit of a dent in it but I think it's okay I mean the dented side uh, won't be visible from the outside anyway I clean it up so now I'm going to remount everything for the dial mechanism and then probably I'll mount back the radio into its cabinet as well okay so I found in the end what was the real problem with uh, the dial cord and and well the the dial mechanism in its entirety and anyway uh, I could say this was a typical case of a botched job so 
you will remember that the front plate of the dial so this little piece of metal okay was seriously dented and bent right here in this area okay so after having unmounted it I started to investigate the whole mechanism really of um, well the whole dial mechanism actually and I noticed a couple of things first of all uh, and by the way I rewired the uh, dial mechanism and that took me well almost 40 minutes to get it done so rewiring a dial mechanism even uh, an apparently simple one like this one well it's really not that simple and I had to make a number of improvements um, on it actually so as to well make it work as it was probably originally intended to do anyway you'll notice the two knots back there at the dial wheel in fact this wheel here is what turns the tuning capacitor underneath the PCB now you'll notice that and hang on I'll take a pointer here so you notice that that knot right here okay is the wire going to the spring the tension spring in to the dial wheel you see the spring there okay now originally the knot that tied the end of the spring to the rest of the wire was way way too big and so this little hang on this little knot here was rubbing against the PCB underneath now you can see there are a number of soldering points underneath the dial wheel okay and since that knot was really really big it kept rubbing and snagging on all those solder points underneath the wheel so what the guy at the factory actually did because of the snagging and all that uh, was to actually tie this knot here so the loop actually here which runs underneath the wheel as it was always intended to do so let me show you the top okay so you can see just the very end of that little loop underneath the wheel there okay and the spring actually also runs underneath the wheel and in fact you can see there is a cutout in the wheel where the spring is housed okay so instead of doing that he led the loop which you see he back well down there he led it up here and hooked it to the spring on top of the wheel of course that that worked but the result of that was that the whole thing rubbed against the the back of the dial plate and you can see the rubbing actually of the spring here okay so this trace here is actually uh, the scratching made by the hook of the spring onto the aluminum of the dial plate so and then of course he applied a liberal amount of, of sealing glue to the dial tension spring you'll remember I'm sure so I had to fix that so I made a, a tiny loop with a, a small mountaineers knot um, 
and which takes a lot less space than the the knot they made like this one here which is more like a hangman's uh, knot and uh, I placed the spring underneath the wheel like it was always intended to be also I placed a little holder like you can see here well sort of a washer let's say uh, on top of the wheel um, which is held down by the screw of course and which will hold the spring in place okay so the spring can never jump up and rub against the dial plate any longer okay so that's the first error let's say that I corrected now zoom out a little bit here so now we look at this end here originally at that end where you see that that little copper standoff here with a groove at the top here was not a a copper or brass standoff but it was something like this now basically this is a piece of plastic with a, a sort of a guiding rail molded into it and this was hooked over the PCB like this okay hang on I'm trying to simulate here how it would have stood so like this okay and the wire would pass in between those guiding rails you see over there but that being plastic and only held down by a tiny screw at the other side of the PCB you could never ever place enough tension on the wire to make it work properly okay because this plastic is simply too soft and would give would give quite a lot actually as soon as I tried to tension the wire you see here um, well this plastic nearly broke off so I said no this is not the right way to do things so I found in my stash of special screws and nuts and, and whatever I found this little brass well you could say standoff which was probably used many years ago in a small portative radio portable radio excuse me and um, by luck um, it had the exact same treading for the little screw that held down this standoff so in that sense I'm really lucky but there is a problem this standoff here the plastic one has treading on top and that is meant to screw down the dial plate and I don't have a standoff with treading on top I only have this one here so from now on unfortunately the dial plate will have to be mounted with only two screws all right dial plate mounted now we mount back the whole circuit into the cabinet everything is mounted back to the front part of the cabinet now I'm getting ready to reattach the carrying handle okay to the sides of the radio then we close back up the radio and we give it one final try so by the way 
from that screw over there which I said was crooked in the beginning of the video well it's still crooked and you know why because the hole in the PCB uh, to the standoff beneath it is not is off center by more oh, I would say a millimeter and a half maybe two so that's why you can never completely screw in this screw because it's it's simply crooked um, and I'm not going to drill into the PCB all right I'm going to show you the radio I restored by day because I think I'll have better chances to show you uh, or rather to let you hear some radio stations for two specific reasons first of all I think that deep in the night radio stations cut their transmission power to the absolute minimum which of course me makes reception much harder um, also there's uh, at least two there are at least two radio amateurs living in the neighborhood of which I know of at least and they seem to operate their uh, transmission equipment uh, mainly at night and not so much in the afternoon so to cut a long short story short these are the parts that I removed from the radio so they are all electrolytics old electrolytics I don't know whether they are Russian made or possibly French or maybe even Romanian who knows in any case I didn't want to run the risk of leaving them in the radio and having them fail so I removed them and I replaced them by modern equivalents okay so as you can tell I um, reassembled the radio I've got it hooked up to my power supply so let me see on which band am I now okay I'm on the long wave band so let's have a look Okay, that's a French radio station, so let's see. Okay, so this is a, an English radio station and I think that's the BBC. I'm not entirely sure, but... Okay, that's another French radio station.
Okay, by the way, I'm on long wave. Okay, so. Which is the scale on the left. The GO scale, which stands for Grand Orb. Okay, let's switch to shortwave. I don't know which transmitter that is, it's really very weak. It sounds Slavic, so I wouldn't be astonished if that's a Russian or a Romanian or a Czech uh, transmitter. So, there are a few weak transmitters on shortwave, but shortwave is, to receive anything on shortwave is really a rare occurrence nowadays, uh, because they shut down more and more shortwave transmitters. Okay, so, well, that will conclude the demonstration of the radio. Um, my final opinion on it is that it's a, a cheap little radio that was not very well designed or engineered. It had quite a few flaws that I had to repair. So, and taking into consideration that it was a radio probably built in Romania, uh, I would guess somewhere in the 80s. Well, you know, that country had uh, still very few resources to build anything of high quality. So, let's say within their means, within the times they did it or built it it's okay but it's certainly not high quality so that's it that concludes this episode on restoring a seven transistor portable radio made in Romania and of the brand or type alpha